Let's talk about Justin Ross making another great impression via this nasty one-on-one. -on -one. Unfortunate injuries starting to pile up. Travis Kelsey going at somebody again for the second day in a row, but this time using his fist and much freaking more. But first, how about those? <laughs> Today's camp practice was number two with the pads on, and one of the first players out there was Chief Safety Justin Reed, who was signing things for fans and also practicing some field goals, including this 50-yarder. I mean, he had the distance, and as a backup kicker, I approve of this practice. Harrison Butker is probably somebody else who approves, even though he is somebody who hopes to never get hurt again. Remember, last year he sprained his ankle during the Chiefs' first kickoff week one and struggled to recover for months afterwards. However, he came alive in the postseason and came through clutch as always when it mattered. Well, he spoke to the media today and said how he's kicking now is better this training camp than he was kicking last training camp before he was even injured. So he feels in a good rhythm, has maybe sacrificed a little power for accuracy, but still has enough distance for all of his kicks. He did take more time off than normal this offseason to heal up and rest that ankle and then began ramping up slowly during OTAs, slower than normal. And now that they are at camp, he's kicking quite a bit now and he said his ankle feels great. Well, that is great news indeed for Harry. Harrison Butker, who will be dependent on this season to kick more than one game winner, I'm sure. Anyway, back to camp. As far as injuries are concerned and or players who didn't practice, the list keeps growing. So let's start with the ones that aren't a surprise. First off, uh, defensive tackle Chris Jones is still not there and holding out during contract negotiations that are taking quite a while. Hopefully we hear some good news soon, but things are reportedly still at a stalemate as both sides try to work together on a long-term deal. Hopefully behind the scenes though, They've gotten closer, please. However, someone on Twitter asked Chris Jones today, how's it going? And he responded saying, all is good. And that could mean something or quite possibly nothing at all. In fact, he could literally just be answering generically like, yes sir, all is fine here. Either way, we're gonna find out sooner hopefully, then later on the Chris Jones front. Next up, linebacker Isaiah Moore is still dealing with a knee issue. Wide receiver Kadarius Toney recently had knee surgery and is out until at least week one of the regular season. And honestly, upon his return, he's going to have to be eased back into the offense on a snap count. And now for the ever-growing list of new injuries or players not practicing. Running back Clyde Edwards-Alaire was sick today. Defensive end Mike Dana strained his calf during yesterday's practice. Tight end Jody Fortson hurt his right shoulder yesterday as well. And there's no real details yet for Jody other than yesterday he went down after trying to catch a pass, got rolled on by a linebacker, I think it was Cole Christensen, then got up in a lot of pain, sort of cradling his arm uh, to take pressure off of his shoulder is my guess. Coach Reed though did confirm it was his shoulder and said they're gonna get it checked out, but we don't have the answers as far as details of the severity of the injury just yet. Cornerback Legereus Snead didn't practice today due to his knee, an issue he was dealing with during the offseason as well, and they were reportedly ramping him back up at camp on a snap count of sorts, but maybe his knee flared up a bit and they're simply backing off and being cautious. Then linebacker Drew Tranquil strained his neck yesterday and left on the same cart that Fortson did, although it looks like Drew Turk Wharton and Mike Dana were all spotted working today with athletic trainers off to the side in workout gear. And then outside practice was cut short due to inclement weather. These storm photos look freaking dope though, but the team moved indoors to finish up the rest of practice. And unfortunately, according to Nate Taylor, it looks like Nazi Johnson sustained what appeared to be a significant right leg injury on the first rep of a team period indoors. He quote, crumpled and grabbed his knee after covering a double move, and the Chiefs PR confirmed it was Nazi's right knee, but that's all the details they gave, and I truly hope the best for Nazi as he was someone really starting to stand out at camp. Even today was Sneed out. He was working in with the ones and even had a nice pass break up against Sky Moore on this 1v1 here. So definitely a tough break for the second year DB. Special teams coordinator Dave Tobe was bummed by the news of Nazi saying, quote, he is my starting gunner. He really came on at the end of the year and ended up being one of my better players. So it would be a blow to lose him, but we just have to hope for the best. Tobe did say though that they do have nice depth at the cornerback position and noted that OTAs and minicamp has been outstanding from a special team standpoint. Guys are flying around and it's good to see them out there hungry to improve. He feels much better overall about the special teams room this season compared to last because they had way less turnover this offseason roster wise compared to the year prior. And a lot of the guys 
that were on the roster last year were super young, now have a year under their belt. He then noted some rookie standouts for him right now and first complimented once again running back Daenerik Prince. Quote, I think he's a special talent as a returner. He's got a lot of skills. He's looked really good in practice. I'm excited to see him in a preseason game here as we get going. And while Prince has been getting work in the offense, some with the ones and some with the twos, I do think that is indeed the way he solidifies a roster lock by earning the nod as a starting returner. Tobe also said Chamari Connor has looked good starting on a couple phases. Nick Jones was another standout for him and he's grateful to have some four phase second year guys returning like Jack Cochran and Leo Chanel. <laughs> and speaking of Jack Cochran, more on that guy in a bit. Tobe then said Richie James is currently the front runner for the job as the punt returner. He does a good job catching, is an experienced guy with a lot of reps under his belt and is the leader in the pack right now. However, he did say that Smith Marset and Nico Romijo are looking nice back there as well. But what I did take away from that, at least for now, is Daenerik Prince is getting the nod as the team's kick returner. Meanwhile, Richie James is getting the nod as the team's punt returner, which also means both are on track to more than likely make the 53-man roster at the moment, which is no real surprise for me, at least at this point in time. And then to echo what I said earlier about Harrison Butker, Dave Tobe said that Harrison is looking great and the injury is all behind him now, so great news. Next up, MVS spoke to the media today and said camp doesn't get easier no matter how many years you do this, but he's locked in and focused on this upcoming year. The Super Bowl is in the past. That's what he said when he was asked about it, and he said they're here to refocus and do it all over again. He said Sky is somebody who is super talented. He's more comfortable with who he is in the offense, and MVS is excited for him this upcoming season. Rasheed Rice and Justin Ross reminds him of himself when he was a rookie, especially Justin Ross, who MVS said is pretty much identical to his body type. He said he's taken Justin under his wing, as well as Rice, encouraging them to be themselves and just go out there and perform. No pressure, just do what you've been doing your whole life, and that is play football. He then complimented Mahomes as a leader, said Andy Reid does the teaching, and Mahomes is the on-the-field voice for it, holding guys to the standard. Uh, MVS is more vocal in the wide out room this year, being the oldest guy in the room and heading into year two. He's able to help teach the system to the new guys and said it's an honor for him to do so. Jawan Taylor also spoke today and is loving camp so far. He came here in great shape because he heard how difficult Andy Reid's training camp was, so he worked hard to get ready for it all. He then complimented Trey Smith who as the right guard is the only person Jawan Taylor is oftentimes playing next to, uh, saying he is a great vet. Quote, he brings that dominance and that nasty mentality, and I like that a lot. I like to fancy my game after that. And uh, that sounds freaking great to me. And speaking of Trey Smith, it was reported that he pancaked Leo Chanel today on a block in nine on sevens, which does not surprise me one bit. But from here, let's look at some highlights from today's practice. One of the most intriguing ones that I saw was seeing defensive tackle Danny Shelton on offense. He actually was lined up as a receiver, went in motion. Mahomes handed off the ball to him, and Shelton then proceeded to throw a touchdown pass to offensive lineman Nick Allegretti. A double big man touchdown? Sign me up for that. I mean, that's freaking crazy, but let's get it. Next up on this play, it was a play action pass in which MVS beat his double coverage. However, Mahomes underthrew him, and while MVS did make a nice adjustment on the ball, rookie safety Chamari Connor had a great play ripping the ball out from MVS's hands on the way to the ground. So a great play by the rookie, certainly. Next up, while earlier I showed a video of Nazi and tight coverage on Sky Moore, this time Nazi loses this rep to fan favorite Justin Ross. Nazi thought Ross was going deep and Ross was like, nah fam, and was left wide open right here with enough time to put his hands behind his back and wipe them on his towel before making the catch. So yeah, nice rep from Ross, which honestly it did involve some tough timing for Nazi, who turned his head around to look for the ball at the same time Ross stopped, but nice move by Justin there for sure. Stock keeps rising. And some are saying that this was offensive pass interference by Ross here, but I disagree. There was no full extension. Uh, there was a little push off from Ross, but it was minimal and probably more than likely wouldn't be called in a game. I mean, let's be honest, stuff like this happens on almost every single play in the league, so I wouldn't overanalyze this 1v1 rep. However, it's yet another great showing by Ross here, who many are rooting for to make this year's roster. Another player with a nice 1v1 rep was Sky here against Joshua Williams, and that stall from Sky at the beginning, faking inside off the line, was pretty freaking nice, causing Williams to bite. One of many nice plays so far from Sky at camp. And then another receiver, reportedly one one v1 rep was Richie James against DiCaprio Boodle, who if you remember, DiCaprio was the guy Kelsey got into it with yesterday and actually swung on and had to be separated by Brian Cook. Well, after Richie's W, he and Boodle could be seen going back and forth, jawing at each other, making hand signals like, yeah, 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 talk, talk, talk.
talk, but as they were walking to the side, James put his arm around Boodle to let him know it was all love, and it's just them being competitive, and that's how it goes most of the times at camp and practices and even in the game. These guys are just that, extremely competitive, and sometimes things can be taken too far, whether it's being tired from camp, the heat, adrenaline, or a combination of all those things. However, that doesn't always mean it's okay to react in certain ways, especially if you're one of the veteran leaders on the team, and here's what I mean. Yesterday, Kelsey got into it with the Caprio Boodle, making contact with Kelsey nearly three seconds after the play was blown dead, and Kelsey did not like that one bit. So. Pushing happened, hitting happened, had to get broke up. Well, fast forward to today's practice when Mahomes could be seen connecting with Kelsey here in typical QB1 to tight end one fashion. A great placed ball by Mahomes to where only Kelsey could go up and get it. And then of course, Kelsey had the great catch, jumping up, grabbing the ball and spinning around with two feet in for a touchdown. And right after Kelsey landed, linebacker Jack Cochran could be seen coming in attempting to punch the ball out. And Kelsey then proceeded to drop the ball and punch this man in the back of the head to which Cochran was like, what the hell, man? I mean, I don't know if he said that, but that's what I would have said at least. And then pushing, yelling, and shoving ensued immediately after. And upon watching this several times, I really feel like this was a bit of an overreaction by Kelsey as Cochran was just doing what he's being told to do, which is finish to the very end. Finish, finish, finish. I mean, we harped, I mean, th these guys, if there's one word that they hear every practice, when we're watching tape, when we're out of practice, every coach, every player is yelling to finish. But on the flip side, I have a feeling this has been happening to Kelsey and other receivers, tight ends, etc. Often at camp with players being overly aggressive at times as they are fighting to make the roster and make an impact. And the result of that is probably them trying to do a little too much. And it does appear Kelsey clearly had control of the ball in the end zone. It was a touchdown and maybe a punch out on the ball wasn't needed to be attempted. But again, Jack Cochran, he's on the fringe, linebacker five, trying to make it. Maybe he did a little bit too much, but he's being told to finish the play to the very end, and it was kind of a bang-bang play. And then, of course, the reaction on social media to this was a mixed bag, with some saying it's just camp, it's a big old nothing burger, get over it, you pansies. Others saying, well, maybe it wasn't the biggest deal, but with Kelsey being one of the veterans and leaders, faces of the entire franchise. He should probably show a little bit more restraint here. And shortly after this play began making its rounds, practice was over. Travis Kelsey actually did take to Twitter to apologize. I mean, he didn't say sorry, but a true leader takes accountability for their actions. And that's what he did with this tweet. He said, gotta be a better teammate, gotta be a better leader, plain and simple. And I also have a feeling he found Jack Cochran afterwards to have a little chat with him. After all, like I said before, Jack is a second year linebacker who's fighting for that linebacker five spot. So maybe he's doing a little too much here at the end, but Kelsey definitely responded a bit harshly. Either way, it's not the end of the world. Nobody's hurt, no broken bones or anything crazy like that. But I do appreciate Kelsey taking the time to send the message he did after practice. And with all that being said, what are your thoughts on the situation? Did Kelsey overreact a bit here? Is it nothing? And then what about all these injuries starting to pile up at camp here early on? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.